widespread market. The starters on the ladder now as Frequent Fryer goes in. They're set, ready to run. Stand by. Gates are back, racing. And the first to get going out of the gates is Frequent Friar. Jumping well on the inside is Abel Dane pushing through from General Grant. So Abel Dane, Frequent Friar settled together. General Grant quickly angles off the fence to find a bit of early cover. A length away, Aragain driving up near the inside when everyone wanted to stay off the fence. He's a pro from our ideal. On the fence then, Secret Pearl. Blackwater Bay back there at Beckett's Gate, 1800 to go. Followed by Mass Effect and then the Grey without reason last of all is Diplomat Express. To that crossing at the 1600 they head and Abel Dane goes out to lead by more than two frequent fryer. The pace has been clapped on. Over on the outside running third in the all grey silks General Grant just shading on the rails. He's a pro. A length Aragain at the 1400 Secret Pearl behind those on the inside three quarters of a length away. Our ideal. It was followed after a length and a half Blackwater Bay back with Mass Effect then without reason and Diplomat Express is back at the tail of the field, spotting the leader nearly a dozen lengths. To the riverside they go. With 1,100 to run, and Abel Dane, say, Abel Dane leads the way. Out by a length and a half on Frequent Friar. Running third, General Grant. They're starting to coast a bit mid-race now. He's a pro down on the inside. A length away without any changes in transit. Aragain from Secret Pearl. Then came our ideal back there in the second half. So is Mass Effect. Blackwater Bay with 7.50 left to go. And then on the rails, Diplomat Express, and with out reason towards the tail, but it's Abel Dane that leads the way. Abel Dane, 650 to go. Three quarters. Now the runs are coming. Frequent Fry, General Grant about to go. Pulls out three wide now when they start to bunch up. On the inside, he's a pro. Looks for an out, though. They're concertina in coming into the turn. He got squeezed back. Then Secret Pearl around the Marragay. Now ideal Blackwater Bay without reason. Followed further back by Mass Effect. And then came Diplomat Express into the home straight. General Grant hit the front. Aragain collared it very quickly. Back behind them, Frequent Friar, Secret Pearl, Blackwater Bay down the outside. Aragain, though, with 150 to go from General Grant coming back. It's Aragain. Aragain on the outside. General Grant fighting tooth and nail. Ahead, bobbing go. All tight go. Great finish. General Grant came back at Aragain. Not sure who got the right bobbing on the line. It's a photo. Aragain, General Grant, without reason, came late. Close up in a photo with Blackwater Bay. He's a pro. Looked a bit unlucky. In behind them, Secret Pearl. Frequent Friar, Mass Effect was next in. And then our ideal, Diplomat Express and the pacemaker had faded right out of it to finish back their last home in Abel Dean. Very tight finish. General Grant in for the fight. Came back at Aragain. General Grant's got the judges' verdict. Number two, General Grant. Brad Parnham has beaten Aragain, Chris Parnham and Blackwater Bay in the photo, getting third. In fact, number three, without reason, has grabbed third in front of Blackwater Bay. So two, five, three and one they are. Two, five, three, one. It's General Grant home in the eighth of the day and a fighting victory too. Parnham under the 60 kilos took off and got him flowing into the race. Aragain, though, to the outside, had pounced, grabbed the lead, and uh, General Grant had to find and find plenty. But he did, under the vigour of Brad Parnham, who edges out younger brother Chris in a great go with a nose between them, a length and a quarter second and third, 2.18.8.2. They ran 35.8.0 the last 600 there. So that's a, a fine victory by General Grant there. A gritty win by the All-American Gelding from Soldier's Smile, raced by Rod Russell, trained by S.J. Miller and uh, Brad Parnham. Well, he really earned his fee there, getting it home by the skinniest of margins over Aragain for Brian Kersley by Niagara from Athen Rye, Chris Parnham for J.K. Martin and K.J. Taylor. And third, without reason, coming from well off them by Dash for Cash out of Mystical Messenger for Cole, Lynn Webster, P. Dennison, Paz Princey, A. Torrey, Rob Bransby, and trained by Colin Webster, ridden by Troy Turner. Well, super tight go, and it went right down to the wire. General Grant coming back after getting headed to claim victory. The last event this afternoon, the 
Happy 70th birthday, Ron Sayers, handicap at 4.52. And they're all going to run in the last event of the day as SJ Miller heads down after that uh, pulsating victory. And he would have been delighted with the way that this horse fought under the 60 kilos, Britt. Oh, what a finish and what a performance by General Grant. SJ does join me now. He looked done to a dinner. It looked like Aragain had was well and truly going to run past him. You must be so proud of his effort in the concluding stages, especially, as Mac just said, lumping 60 kilos. Yeah, you know, he's, uh, he's a tough, uh, tough type of horse. There's not much of him. He's a bit of a rude dog, but he can stay. And um, he showed a lot of grit then. Up to 2,200 metres for the first time. Is it always been a trip that you thought he would be suited over? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, he'll stay all day. Um, you know, he's he's sort of maturing and, and getting better every time he goes out there. And, you know, um, it's pretty, pretty much a peach of a ride by Brad. Just worked out beautifully for him. You must have been really bullish in the run with just how he'd been able to ride him. Yeah, yeah, he rode him a treat, you know. Um, it's always hard um, drawing inside barriers with a horse like him, you know, who needs galloping room. And, um, you know, he, he sort of, yeah, he rode him a peach. Given he had the 60 kilos as well, and as you mentioned, there's not a whole heap of him. He's very leggy, but it's not like he carries a whole heap of condition. Were you pleased to see Brad push the button when he did and move him into the race? Yeah, well, he, he's got to know him pretty well. And, um, you know, I just leave the riding up to Brad and... He knows when to go and he, you know, he, nine times out of ten he gets it pretty well right. Today he got it centimetre perfect. Well done to you. Thanks very much. There is SJ Miller after the win of General Grant and Brad fought it out with younger brother Chris. What a finish it was, Scott. And he's pretty proud about it too. There's a big smile on the face of Bradley Parnham here. General Grant, Brad, there's probably only one way to ride him and that is pretty hard because he can run his race in patches and he needs a bit of room to move. Yeah, for sure. I, I must say, I was pretty confident that he could come here and win today, but I was probably my biggest concern was drawing barrier two. I didn't want to get pushed to the fence, but once I landed off the fence and got a pretty good run throughout, uh, I wasn't afraid to move him into the race early because I know that he's, he, if, if he was to get beat, it's probably from being out sprinted. And uh, Chris, he actually got past me, and to my horse's credit, he picked himself up. Big effort too, 60 kilos, first time at the staying trip to get uh, clearly headed by something that followed you in the run and then fight it back. It's a good win. It is. He's a tough horse, um, and he was... I actually don't know what weight Chris has had, but I'm, I'm assuming he carried a lot more weight than, than it. But I knew that it, that was his attribute. He's a good stayer, so I uh, just had to ride him like that. 57 and a half, I think. It's so about uh, two and a half kilos. It's a good effort. Well done, Bradley. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Is a Brad Parnham just gets the better of brother Chris in the finish. And I saw their mum, Can, standing on the fence as uh, both boys came back in. I can't help but wonder, in that situation, Scott, Neville doesn't have a runner. Who's Kaz cheering for when you've got two sons in this case? And when Stevie's back there, who's she going for? The answer's always Stevie. Even if he doesn't have a ride, you still cheer for Stevie Britt. But I'm sure that uh, they could get her that photo finish in a frame for tomorrow for Mother's Day and Stevie could crop himself in on the side. Yeah, it sounds perfect. Well, one more race to come here from Ascot. It is the happy 70th birthday Ron Sayers handicap. We'll be back with that race very, very soon.